I love to contradict myself. In my last video, I talked about FinGBT, which is a financial large language model structure that they propose in this research paper. And the reason why I was so excited about it is because a lot of the way that they structure how they are training and what data they're feeding into the large language model to try to make it proficient in financial analysis falls in line with what I believe would be successful. However, there's a big part of the paper that's kind of not considered. And the part of the paper that's not considered is, okay, this seems like a great structure that you can throw into a large language model and allow it to do some amazing financial research. But what it's not considering is, can the large language model actually handle that data in the first place? Can it actually come up with insights and information? Can it say, you should buy this stock or this stock is really good and this one's really bad and here's why. Can it actually do that? or are there going to be some issues that you're going to face? And so the other day I was on Twitter and I came across this research paper, which I thought was really interesting because at face value, it doesn't seem like it would apply to this, but in this video, I'm going to explain why this research paper pretty much proves that large language models might not be as good as we had hoped for financial analysis. They might not be able to say, this is the stock you should buy and this is the stock you shouldn't buy, even if it has the right information to be able to determine that. So before I get into this video, I just want to quickly mention the project that I'm working on, which is called Ticker Trends. Ticker Trends is an alternative data financial research platform that allows you to derive actionable insights from alternative data from all different sources across the internet. An exciting thing is that we just recently launched the Social Arbitrage Fund, which is a hedge fund, which we are currently raising capital for. I'm excited to announce that due to the success of some of my recent videos, we've had an overwhelming amount of interest um, in this fund. So I'm really excited for what the future holds for Tigger Trends. And I hope that if you all enjoy what I talk about in my videos, um, about the research that I do on Twitter, YouTube, Medium, then I think that you would really enjoy ticker trends even more because what I show on these channels is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what I think I can provide to you um, when working together, especially through a platform like ticker trends. So if you're interested, check out tickertrends.io or send me an email admin at navtrading.co if you're interested in the social arbitrage fund, but I'll get right back into the video talking about can large language models infer causation from correlation? So the first base that I want to set for this, this argument that I'm going to present in this video, um, and, and this really important piece of information that may allow you to create a better large language model for financial analysis, is first you need to understand why ChatGBT is so bad at math. I think this is a really good uh, basis understanding, and I'll, I'll try to explain this really quickly. Um, I, I liked this analogy that this person made here on Reddit. Um, in short, while a large language model may be able to generate text that sounds like it understands math, it is not capable of actually doing math. Similarly, a chef may, skilled, may be skilled with a knife, but that does not make them qualified to perform surgery. So <laughs> this is an interesting example, but I, another way that I like to describe it is let's say that I'm a math major in college and my friend is an English major. Um, we're both considered to be very intelligent in our own respective fields, but my friend who's an English major, they might want to do a really complex math problem. And for people who don't study math or who don't enjoy math, you hear this phrase a lot of the time that says, my brain is not wired for math, <laughs> right? It just doesn't click, it doesn't make sense. I have to put so much effort into it and I still don't get how to solve this problem or to, to do this type of math. That's what a lot of people will say. And let's say my, my English major friend feels that way. If they receive a hyper complex math problem, um, some complex derivative problem, they're going to look at that and they might guess an answer. They're, they're going to write something down because they're really smart. They might do a bunch of research into different textbooks. Maybe they looked at it before and they, they think they remember how to do it, but they're not really sure. 
they're going to write something down, but 99% of the time it's going to be wrong just because they haven't studied it maybe for four years or five years. This is a really good way to think of ChatGPT because essentially ChatGPT is an English major that is really, really good at predicting text. It's really good at being able to say, um, after TH, the next letter is probably going to be E. But if you use that same logic for a math problem, it could say two plus two, what's the next character after that? Well, it'll probably think it's equals. And then after that equal sign, what, what, what could it be? Well, it's probably four. But if I take that same example of putting that complex math problem where I give it a hundred symbols of, of different things for my mathematical formula, and after that equals sign, it's saying, well, what's the highest probability of the number that's after this? It doesn't have any examples in its training set or any basis to be able to determine the solution for that problem. So whenever it gives me a number at the end of that complex derivative problem, it's essentially just guessing based on some weights that it has. Like it might say, well, three is 0.2% higher chance that that's what the next letter is rather than two. Um, but in reality, it doesn't actually know what it's doing. So it's the same thing with an English major and a math major. The math major actually studied the topic and knows how to solve it and reason through it, whereas the English major doesn't really understand what's going on. That, that's how ChatGBT interacts with math and why it just doesn't work with math. Um, and a lot of people who will come across this are people who are math majors and are maybe trying to put their, their mathematical formulas and homework into ChatGBT and are not getting the right answer from it. So why is this important for financial analysis? Well, essentially, in order to solve this issue, what people have done is they've said, well, if ChatGPT is really bad at math, then we can make a way to give ChatGPT that skill. Um, and by giving the skill, I don't mean that you're training ChatGPT to do it itself, but it's essentially saying, if my English major friend is, has a math problem, instead of trying to do it themselves, they're going to contact me and I'm going to do the problem for them and then send them back the response. So that's what these plugins do. They just give ChatGPT extra skills that it's not very good at. Um, and ChatGPT is smart enough to at least know if it receives a math problem, instead of trying to do it itself, it's just gonna send it to Wolfram Alpha who's going to solve it for them. Um, but in the realm of financial analysis, a lot of what you're analyzing comes down to numbers. Um, so for example, even if I'm trying to analyze textual data, let's say that I have a huge corpus of tweets related to a specific company. And those tweets are, uh, I wanna get the sentiment score for those tweets. So I get a thousand tweets and I get a thousand sentiment scores from those tweets that ChatGPT generated. And it's probably gonna be pretty good at generating those scores because it understands how to interpret text very well. But the second that I say, here's my 1000 tweet sentiment scores, and here's some price data for the stock that those tweets are related to. And I asked ChatGPT, look at these two data sets and tell me if I should buy or sell this stock. ChatGPT is gonna be really bad at this because remember, this is not textual, textual data. These are numbers that it doesn't have any reference for being able to understand how to infer, infer or analyze it. Um, and this ties into the research paper because what the research paper is talking about is if large language models can infer causation from correlation. And so when you combine this idea of putting in numbers into large language models that it's trying to analyze, and then that large language model trying to come up with an answer of, oh, the, the sentiment and the price are correlated in a, po in a positive way where if the sentiment's going up, then the stock price is also going up. It's virtually, it's, it's very difficult for these large language models to understand this. That's why this paper is so applicable to financial analysis. So let me just read this short snippet from the paper and I'll, I'll leave a link to the full paper in the description down below so that you can read through it if you like. Um, causal inference is one of the hallmarks of human intelligence. 
While the field of casual NLP has attracted much interest in recent years, existing causal inference datasets in NLP primarily rely on discovering causality from empirical knowledge, example, common sense and common sense knowledge. What they're saying here is they wanted to make a way to be able to determine if ChatGPT and other large language models are able to reason through this idea of cause and effect um, on, on any sort of data. And so they created a data set where they said, here is a set of things that have a, an obvious predefined answer as to what the causal effect is between two values. Um, so causation and correlation predefined answers um, to certain examples, and they fed that into ChatGPT to be able to determine a score for how accurate ChatGPT is able to determine causation and correlation from their data set. Um, so they did this, and they did this with a data set of 400,000 samples, um, which they evaluated 17 existing LLMs with, and through their experiments, they were able to identify a major shortcoming of LLMs in terms of their causal inference skills and show that these models achieve almost a close to random performance on the task. So what this is saying is, in my example earlier where I was feeding in that Twitter data and price data to ChatGPT or, or any large language model, and I asked it, although, you know, even though to me it's really obvious that the sentiment score is going up and the price is going up too. So it should tell me to buy the stock essentially. I know the answer that I'm looking for. This research paper is saying that it's possible that I will receive a completely randomized answer from the large language model, which to me provides absolutely zero value. <laughs> because if it's 50-50, whether it's right or wrong, it's not telling me anything other than if I just flipped a coin and said, you know, heads, I buy the stock, tails, I sell the stock. Large language models by default are not built for determining causation and correlation from textual data, let alone numerical data. <laughs> um, so going along with this research paper, they say this shortcoming is somewhat mitigated when we try to repurpose LLMs for this skill via fine tuning, but we find that these models still fail to generalize. They can perform causal inference in, in distribution settings when variable names and textual expressions used in the queries are similar to those in the training set, but fail in out of distribution settings generated by perturbing these queries. So again, this is a really complex sentence, but I can just boil it down to really simple explanation. What they're saying is that the way that they thought that they would be able to fix this shortcoming of large language models is by saying, well, if it's if these models are not able to determine uh, these causal these causal uh, relationships, then we're just going to fine tune it to train it to be able to do this. Um, so we're going to give it a bunch of examples of what we want it to be able to do and answer, and we want the model to be able to find out and and learn how to get the result that I'm expecting. So they did this and they found that it did improve the performance. However, when they provided it, it only improved the performance for when it provided the model with the data sets that it was trained with or with examples from uh, similar data sets from what it was trained with. So let me give you an example. With my Twitter example, where I feed in the Twitter data set and the price data set, Let's say that I fine tune my model to be able to understand the relationship between the price and Twitter data sets really, really well. And I fine tune it so that it can do that. Now I think, okay, now that I fine tuned my model to be able to determine the relationship between the price and uh, social data, that if I feed in some search data to my model, then it should be able to figure it out because now it's trained on, on determining these relationships. This research pa paper is saying that no, actually, once you feed it in some data that it is unfamiliar with and hasn't seen in its training set, it's again going to fall back to being exceedingly unreliable in getting the results that you're looking for. The accuracy is, is going to collapse. Um, so this is why this is, <laughs> this is really a major issue with these large language models. Um, 
Again, if you're interested in reading through this full research paper, uh, then I will leave it linked down in the description down below um, to be able to kind of reason through it and, and look at more information regarding their research and the data set um, that they have linked on this tweet. Um, but what I'm trying to say with this is, number one, FinGBT is not an easy feat. If you're trying to make like a, a quantitative research strategy or quantitative trading strategy with ChatGBT or any large language model, you're going to have to do a lot of work with that large language model to be able to allow it to make any form of good actionable insight uh, that it derives from data or information that you're feeding into it. It's not just going to be able to know how to do it off the bat. But that being said, I do think that this is exciting because it opens the discussion to how we can solve this. Um, how can we make these large language models infer causation from correlation and deal with numerical data in a much better way than it currently does? Already we have a potential solution which is fine tuning the model to, to get it done in a better way. I think another uh, approach that could be interesting is similar to the Wolfram Alpha plugin is to say how can we offload this type of inference and analysis from the large language model to a third party software or um, model or um, you know process and then just give that back to the large language model to, to present the final solution. Whatever it may be, I don't know what it will be, but I do think this is really exciting and something really cool to think about. Again, if you're interested in what I'm working on to check out tickertrends.io, or email me admin at navtrading.co if you're interested in the social arbitrage fund. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.